Hello. Welcome to After the Fall Online RPG Game Master Training. My name is Marta Langiewicz, and the game was designed and created by Martin Rzutkowski. So, you know you're going to become the After the Fall Game Master, but what exactly does it mean? What is the game about? What will you have to do and learn to be able to run the game? This webinar is going to help you to figure things out. So first of all, After the Fall Online RPG is actually a mix of a traditional narrative RPG game and a board game. It is meant to be play, played online and it needs two people to be run. One of them is the facilitator. That's a person who probably talked to you and hired you as the game master. The facilitator is the one who gets your participants, your players, uh, gathers them, recruits them, and who's responsible for sending all the materials both to the participants and you, the game master, and also who's going to go through the debriefing phase of the game. So the part that takes part after the actual gameplay and also who's going to decide together with you on the narrative paths you're going to take during your gameplay. You, on the other hand, as the game master, are responsible for running the game, for telling the story to your players, for immersing them in the world, for keeping the game suspenseful and keeping their emotions high, for making it challenging for them, for making it interesting for the players. So you should be able to improvise very well and you definitely need to know all the game rules by heart. You should be really fluent in them to, in order to be able to provide the players with a narrative experience on the top of lots of mechanics that's in the game. But don't be scared. I'm going to show you where to find all the necessary resources you need to learn how to run the game. So, First and the most important resource for you that you should receive from your facilitator is after the full design document, design doc. It looks like this, there's a cover page. And the parts you definitely should read are the game goals. They are not the gameplay goals, there are the project goals. So you would be able to understand what the whole thing is about. Uh, what can you accentuate uh, during your gameplay? And you'll be able to talk to, to talk to the facilitator about what you both want to achieve throughout the gameplays. Then the story. The sp story part, uh, contains uh, some description of the setting and the narrative that's in the game. If you want to learn more about the game lore, which I strongly suggest because it's extremely interesting, uh, please refer to the organization training. Your facilitator should be able to provide you with that. There is a webinar recording of that uh, with the game creator. It's very interesting and he gives you much more information about the game law than what you can find in the design doc. Then two chapters you should know in and out. You should learn by heart and you should be able to recite whenever you're woken up, basically. Uh, they are the game rules, uh, information about the squad's composition. So how many players should be there? The answer is 12 divided into four squads. What are the uh, winning? Uh, what are the winning conditions? Uh, what are the zones in the games? What are the status indicators? The resources? The challenges? What are conditions of players' death? Also, uh, what are the phases of the gameplay? So each phase is divided into uh, sorry, each uh, round is divided into four uh, phases. Also, what the game flow is. 
and what the end game crisis is. This is a very important part you are going to decide on. Uh, this part is really about building tension, creating a grand finale for your players. So make sure you read it carefully. And then part seven about the NPC player characters, non-player characters, and the uh, player characters, PCs, squad descriptions. So Sigma, Epsilon, Theta, and Gamma with their squad objectives. The rest of the design document probably is not that interesting to you, to be honest. Except for the uh, design doc, uh, and hopefully the organization training that I really do encourage you to watch. It's really interesting and it should be of immense help to you. Uh, you also are going to get uh, access to uh, game master files we provided for you. So uh, let me show you on what the game masters folder includes. So there is an approximate game schedule. And the game takes around four hours of the actual gameplay plus five minutes more or less, probably slightly more uh, of the narrative breathing the rounds, it lasts for 10 rounds at most, and the narrative finale. There are some breaks included in the gameplay, but please make sure that you have enough time and you're aware of how much time it takes to play a game. Uh, also, you as a game master are responsible for timing the game. So if your players take too much time thinking about something or uh, doing something, doing some action, please make sure to push them slightly so they hurry up with the decisions or whatever they are making. Next, we have the list of end game crisis. So as I said, as the grand finale uh, around uh, around round five and up, you should uh, show the players uh, one of the grand end game crises. So there are different rules for them to overcome the crisis. And this is one of the game uh, mechanics to win, one of the winning conditions. So the game can be won either by each team if they complete, or one team actually, if they complete uh, their team goals first, or by all the players, if they handle the final crisis. Also, there is a game flow chart. So you can follow it clearly. We've got the narrative briefing, three rounds. So that's a time for your players to warm up to the world and for you to show them the world, to sh explain it to them step by step, of course, by narration, not just putting it bluntly. Then there is a narrative interlude and the break because four hours is pretty long time, especially in front of the computer. Another part, there's the second act, right? The first act, the second act, and then another narrative interlude and the break the end, the last three rounds, and then the narrative final, finale, the grand finale, it needs to be really splendid. And then they move to the summary and the briefing, which probably won't be a responsibility since the facilitator is supposed to take, uh, take care of it. You also get a round flow chart. So each round is divided into four phases, as I mentioned before, when we were scrolling uh, through the uh, design document. So you've got information on what is happening in each of the phases. We've got the planning phase, discussion phase, decision phase, resolution phase. So this is a cheat sheet for you to make it easier. Then there is a game board and game tokens and all the graphics set basically. So if in any case, you don't want to use the tools we suggest you to use, 
or you want to play it with your players as a game, like board game, traditional board game, tabletop board game. You can just print these materials or you can put them in any system you want. It doesn't have to be roll 20. So that's why we provide you with, the, with those graphics. Then there are video sets. So as I mentioned before, there are three non-player characters in the game and each one of them has their own storyline that puts emphasis on a different angle of the story told by you. So uh, as you decide with your facilitator whose story you want to tell, uh, you are going to show your players their videos. Uh, so we've got three characters. There is Vanessa, there is Dr. Goran, and there is Andrusov. As I said, each one of them shows a slightly different story. Uh, and talks about different problems. And these are video series. So there are around seven to 12 short videos in there. So to make it easier for you and uh, not to force you to watch each video a few times so you, you would take notes and remember what is in which video, we also provide you with video transcripts. So these are basically documents that say, what each character said in each video. And last but not least, uh, there are mechanical descriptions of the zones for you. So these descriptions, uh, the written ones, are actually uh, pasted in the Roll20 in the map. I'm going to show you where later on. But uh, first, let's take a look at the map of all the zones with indicated challenges. So, uh, in the design doc, you can read about challenges. So whenever your players enter a room, they are going to face one of five challenges. And you as the game master need to hint to your players beforehand what they can see there. So they know how to prepare for the challenge and use proper action against it. If they fail to guess the challenge, they are going to lose resources. If they guess correctly, they just pay few resources for that. So here's a cheat sheet for you that shows you that, for example, in this coral zone, uh, there are testimonies of horror, right? And here, oh, that's a locked zone. It's impossible to enter uh, without taking a proper action. This way is shut, so you need to excavate through it, and so on. Now let's take a look at the descriptions. So in the ground floor, floor, floor zero, uh, we've got different color-coded zones, as you could see on the map, they had different colors with explanations, so it should be uh, quite easy to identify them. So for example, white. So for example, white. As you can see, the challenge here is deep storage and the resources players, uh, if they guess correctly that uh, the challenge is deep storage, they will have to pay in oxygen and health points. So you, the, the designation is Great Atrium, representative area and official call center. So you as the game master describe it to your players you enter a dark room, but you can see there are signs of greatness. You can see some leftover of shattered marble walls. You can see that there are the leftovers of a huge desk that was probably a reception desk, right? And so on, you just tell the story. You really want to make it interesting for your players. It's because it's not a game board per se, it's a narrative experience mostly. So given your players have managed to solve, to deal with the challenge, they will have decisions to make. Each room, they have three narrative paths to choose from. In the design doc, uh, the decisions are called occurrences. So you say, all right, so you use your flashlights to 
enlightened room, now you can see that there is a lonely, docile ghoul walking around. What do you want to do? It's uh, blabbing him to himself about hunger. You can kill him, or maybe you have other ideas, or maybe you want to ignore the ghoul. Or you can try to get to the security room that you can see in the atrium, right? And each choice they make uh, comes with different cost and gives different price. So as you can see, uh, if they interact with the docile ghoul, uh, they gain sanity and they also get a movie. So they get a piece of this narrative story of one of the NPCs. And uh, same mm, when they open the security room, they gain two energy, but they lose one sanity and they get a movie as well. Uh, if they ignore the ghoul, they will lose two health. And the challenge that's in, in the area turns into hostile because the goal ambushes them. So you should know the board early on. You should know it before playing the game with the players. So you should kind of understand what's where and have an idea about it. And then when you play the game, you should be able to improvise and read those information in spot. Try to imagine beforehand what the rooms look like for you. All right, so I guess it's time to show you our first tool. The tool is called Watch Together. Watch Together is uh, quite an amazing streaming-ish platform. So it allows you to play the videos for, the, for other people who are invited to the room with you. So what you need to do is to upload the videos uh, that are localized in your language to your YouTube account, create a playlist out of them. This is what my friend did, the game creator, and paste the playlist link here. Here are the settings. So I would definitely suggest turning off the autoplay. You can edit the playlist here. You can get rid of it. And, oh yeah, you need to import here. So if you want to uh, invite your players, you just click invite and copy the link. You're going to give the link to your players before you start playing the game, the actual gameplay. This uh, tool is actually very easy to use. One thing you should be careful about is to tell your players that if they click on the play button, uh, they will start videos. So uh, ask them not to mess around with it because uh, they will spoil the fun for themselves and for the other players. Uh, another good hint is uh, to put a blank video, just a black screen with silence uh, on the top of the list. So if there is someone who's like, oh, I'm going to try it, they are not going to see or hear anything. This is like, you know, a pro, pro tip. Uh, so that's basically it for the Watch Together. It's a really simple tool, really, and uh, it's free. Another uh, very important tool for us is going to be Discord. So uh, let me show you how it works. I'm pretty sure you already know it. So here you can see my uh, After the Fall uh, channel. So you're going to need a text channel for like the simple communication purposes and for being able to solve potential technical problems. Uh, your facilitator is probably going to uh, be active on the text channel to help your players, your participants and you with, po with possible technical difficulties. And there are five voice channels, open channel, and each team has their own channel. So there's Sigma, Epsilon, Theta and Gamma channels. Same names, same name as team names. Uh, to add channels, you need to click here and just create channels. You choose if it's text channel or voice channel please refer to uh, our guide on how to use Discord. 
The final tool we're going to use is roll 20. So let me show you how it look, what it looks like and how it works. This is probably the most uh, complicated tool we're using, but uh, don't worry. I'm sure you're going to get a hang on it really soon. So uh, you will be able to copy our map uh, if you want it, uh, or you can place the elements uh, and create the map on your own. It only depends on your preferences. Uh, so please uh, take a look. Sorry. Uh, so here is the game master mat. Here you got the information and the tokens of the challenges, the visitor room tokens, re additional resources you can give to your teams. Uh, here are the teams mats so with the tokens with their actions and with their resources for each team different as you can see sorry uh, as you can see each team mm, has a little symbol of their team on their tokens or on their action tokens so you will be able to mar mark what they actually want to do uh, these tokens are used to show where your uh, teams are at the moment. So for example, let's say Gamma Squad is over here and Sigma Squad is over here. They decided to excavate and they decided to ransack, right? So it's really easy to use. Whenever you need to get rid of some resources, you can just delete them. So for example, they lost uh, a point of health and sanity. Uh, important thing for you to know uh, is that when you double left click on any area, any zone, in the section GM notes, you can see the same list, the same table I showed you before with the information of what's in each room. So line zone, testimonies of horror, you know you should put it there when they enter the room. It will cause them sanity and oxygen if they guess correctly. And you have uh, information what to talk about, how, what to describe, and what are the uh, options, uh, their occurrences, their narrative choices. Uh, also, another important thing to point out is uh, that you have teams here, right? So when you click on the teams, in the uh, tab bio and info, they get basically a uh, team character sheet, let's call it. Uh, so what's important here? You should click edit. And here you can add who can edit and control the journals. You can see them, of course, save changes. And same goes uh, to your team's tokens. So when you click on them, uh, you can uh, add who's going to control them. So for example, Marcin Z and Marta L are going to control this token. That means not only you as the game master, but also your players from this team are, will be able to move the token. You don't have to assign anything to them except for their character sheets. Uh, but if uh, you think it's going to be fun for them and easier for you this way, you can assign the tokens for the players to move. I would strongly recommend uh, to go through Roll20 tutorial. It shows you step by step how to create the map, how to use different map options. And I'm not talking about the after the fall uh, map itself, but a basic uh, basic uh, Roll20 map. I found it very useful. It is easy to follow and it shows you many options that I'm not going to talk about right now, like using uh, different layers, uh, like GM info overlay and stuff like that. Uh, please know there are some things in here that are hidden from the players. They are in the GM overlay. Uh, so you as a GM have to know how to drag them from there. Mm, for example, area, area destroyed 
is one of the additional rules you can apply uh, in the game for your players. So uh, for the additional rules, refer as well to the design doc. Uh, as far as the uh, options go, uh, what is really important in here uh, is to, um, to turn off uh, the video and the uh, voice chat options for your players, or you should ask them to do it actually, because you're going to be talking on Discord all the time. And uh, Discord is a much more powerful tool for that goal than uh, Roll20. So that's why, uh, so the voice doesn't echo back and forth. You should ask your players and you should yourself uh, turn off your video and audio chats. So to sum up, you as the game master are going to lead your players through an immersive narrative board game experience. That goal and educational goal is going to be established together by you and the facilitator. The game itself should take just a bit over four hours and that's uh, the game briefing and the briefing phase, uh, the gameplay themselves included. And you should become best friends with the design doc and the organization training, since it's going to give you a lot of easily digestible uh, background information on the world and the universe they play in the problems please make sure you watch the videos you get familiar with the platforms the discord platform roll 20 platform and the watch together as well and remember the most important part about all of this is actually for your players and you to have fun so don't get too stressed and i promise it gets easier every time you play it or you run it. Thank you very much. Good luck.